evening. Come on in. Let me. Effectively, 
We want to effectively work in the kingdom. Let me turn this music down so you can hear me all the way. So on tonight, as you can see in the title section, we have a new theme for the month. And if you guys don't know, Rise of the Shiro Conference is happening in July in a couple of weeks in Tampa, Florida. Fearless Women Global, founder, prophetess, prophetess Valor Shako is hosting the Fearless Conference called Rise of the Shiro. So we are going to be talking about the Shiro and the hero that is within you, that's within the Bible, because so many times we believe that we have to wear these capes and do these extraordinary things to be called a Shiro or a hero. And, and the latter is true. You don't need all of those things. You really just need the solution. And I should have put that in the title, but if somebody can type this in for me, Heroes and Sheroes brings the solutions. They bring the answer. And we're going to talk about that on tonight. There's so much going on in the world. So many things are going on. And I'm going to be talking about somebody in the Bible that you really don't hear too much of because this is Bible study. And if you don't know who I am, I am Shanika Wingfield. I'm one of your co-lead servants for Contagious Church Charlotte. My amazing husband, Apostle Reggie, will be here to join us in a little bit. We co-lead um, the church here in Charlotte together. We have a phenomenal group of people that we lead, um, that we love, and um we, we are in the business of equipping the saints, building them up, and sending them out. And on tonight, we are going to teach and we're going to talk about the shero, the hero that's within you. But you have to bring the solution. You have to bring the answer. So many things are going on. And there are so many prophecies, so many warnings, so many this and that and that and this is going on in the word and I know you're just like mind boggled about what to hear, what to believe, what to do, what to set foot on, but the what I want you to grasp on tonight in this teaching is that the solution lies within you. If you are a believer of the Holy Spirit, if you are a believer in the son or daughter of Jesus Christ, if he is your Lord and he is your savior, he has given you the answers. He has given you the solutions. All of the time we hear about Daniel and Joseph, how they had solutions and they had the answers to the dreams. But we don't hear about other times when people bring solutions to the problems that's going on in the world. And I'm going to tell you just a little story about how all of this bubbled up. You know, most of you who don't know that I'm a seer. I have tons and tons of dreams every night. The Lord deals with me heavily with dreams and visions. And he gives me revelation uh, with them. And, and so many times it's just for me to either pray and intercede or pray and share or what have you. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you saw this a few weeks ago that the Lord told me to share that the chaos is coming. The chaos is coming. And so many people have prophesied these plagues and the, the murder hornets and the weather and all these things. Are, are a form of judgment. I'm not coming here to tell you that they're a form of judgment, but I am coming here to tell you that when things are happening in the world, we know these things are not of God. We know sickness and diseases are not of God. We know murder is not of God. And we know that he even gives the weather um, um, the, the, the rain to do what it's supposed to do in the earth. So we have to understand that we as believers cannot fix our mouth to always pronounce judgment. But when, when the land is on fire, when water and flood is coming, those things are not of God. But the point that I'm bringing on you tonight is that I had a dream last night and I shared this with Apostle Reggie. You want to say hi to the people before I go? Hello, hello. <laughs> And so last night I had a dream and I was in a house and don't laugh at me. There's people come in my dreams are all kind of crazy people. They come from all kinds of places. DMX was in my dream last night. I was in a brick oh. house. DMX was in my dream and he was in the window and he was, I mean, very, he was very, very, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, lit. Um, he, he smelled of a distillery. He had, um, he was liquored up. And so that, th this bypass that, but in the point um, my sister had said, you guys need to make sure you're in the house because the storm is coming. So me and Dio Mix went outside. 
and we were looking at the clouds. And when I tell you there, there were not normal gray um, rain clouds, these clouds were pitch black like the, the color of his shirt. And I said, my God, now just last week you sent me a dream about the chaos is coming. And now th this weather, these black clouds are coming. Mm -hmm. So I understand in the spiritual realm that something is coming. Yeah, DMX is anointed. He needs to be delivered, though. Yes, he definitely he is called to the people. But deliverance is his portion. Anyway, can we go? And so the rain is coming. And then I came to the house, and there was two silver push buttons on the door. And I, we understand, if you're a dreamer, you understand that silver means revelation. And so the revelation of that was that the rain is coming, the storm is coming, the storms are coming, but we have to, as a body of believers, warn the people. But this is the thing, and we're going to talk about, I'm going to get into our study on today. If you have your Bibles, go with me to Numbers 25. And I know you're like, Numbers 25, what's that about? You'll get it in just a second. But so many people are coming on Facebook, so many people are coming on social media talking about these warnings, these warnings, these warnings are coming, but they are failing to give you the answer. They are failing to give you the solution. Just as in my post, when I said the Lord said that chaos is coming, I gave you the gospel after that. So the chaos is coming, but there's hope because Jesus Christ is our savior. You can run to him and be saved. You can run to him and be safe. And so many people are doing these doom and gloom prophecies and all of these things, but they are failing to give you the hope of Jesus Christ. They're failing to give you the hope of what is to come, which is eternal life in Jesus Christ. If you just surrender your life to him. So these warnings are just our alert system to get to Jesus. So if we are alerting the people, if we're giving the people warning, but we're not sending them to Jesus, we're doing them a disservice. And you might as well not even give them a warning. It's just like the fire alarm to come off, but the firing, uh, the, the firemen don't come to the house. What's the point of the fire alarm going off if the firemen don't come to the house to put the fire out? So we have to give people warning and hope, warning and Jesus. You have to tell people where they have error and where they can be better. You want to say something to that? You know, um, <clears throat> my wife grew up in the fine state of Kansas where there's cows. We just stop. I grew up in the city. Don't listen to him. And, it's not and, all country. Uh, <laughs> dromedaries. Here you go. These dromedaries. Um, I-70. Don't, don't believe Oh, me. my goodness. Um, <laughs> Cows, dromedaries, and and um, for those who don't know where Kansas is geographically located, it is geographically uh, in the in the in the dead center of the United States. Well, why why is all of this stuff relevant? Um, because you know Kansas, if you know if you know about Kansas and Texas and Oklahoma. You know, they are, uh, those are the states that are in the, the center of Tornado Alley. And, and so because of the prevalence of, of storms and because of primarily, particularly the prevalence of tornadic activity, you know, they have these loud sirens that comes, you know, to warn the people that the hurricane has been spotted, spotted. And, and you know, what, 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 since does it make for us as a people in the natural to hear the warning of the hurricane and not adjust yourself, not run run to the place of safety? Come on, uh, listen, I, and, and likewise, just as us Christians, I believe that God does release prophetic warnings. I, do, I believe that God does give us an opportunity to, to prepare for what is to come. But I also believe in, in hope. I also believe in love. I also believe in grace. I also believe in mercy. What is the point of saying you know, failing, what is the point of me saying all of that? Failing to heed to the warning could be uh, destructive in our lives, in the natural. Um, you know, what what happens if, as a, a Kansas native, that I ignore the, the tornado warnings and I don't prepare and I don't go to the place of safety? I'm setting myself up for failure. And likewise, I believe that God gives us warnings so that we can prepare and he is our place of safety. In fact, the word declares that God, he is our present help in times of trouble. We can run to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. And so, um, you know, I, I think it's important to know that, you know, yes, warnings do come. And I believe that, you know, before I ever, 
before I ever let, let, let me let me let me let me really really bring it home before I ever take it to the place or elevate my my discipline with my children they always receive a warning mm -hmm. what happens if they continuously ignore the warning what happens if they continuously ignore the warning what happens if they continuously ignore the warning and so I want to I want you to get this down in your spirit if they continue Continue, my children, as a father, my children, if they continuously ignore the warning, warning, then, you know, destruction will come. You know, there is a greater level of consequence that will come. And the same holds true in the kingdom. God, when we, when we ignore his warnings, then destruction comes. One thing that, as my wife was talking, one thing that really dropped in my spirit was, you know, uh, uh, you know I thought about Noah and how God had... had required him to build in a place where it never saw rain. Noah, it never it never rained in a time and yet he built this massive theme. And 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 I, I find it interesting that there was over a hundred years that had passed from the time God required for him to build the the, the ark and a, at least a hundred over a hundred years had transpired before the flood waters came. What did I what am I saying? The people had a hundred years to repent and to turn back to God. The people had over a hundred years to repent and get their hearts in alignment and right with God. And yet there were only eight people that survived the storm. It's so very, very important as people of God to know when when know when God is sending a warning and how to properly prepare ourselves so that we don't we don't find ourselves, you know, in total chaos. So that we don't find ourselves lost in destruction. What do you what do you, what has God warned you not to do? What has God forewarned you to do? Maybe it was a relationship. He told you not to connect in a relationship. Maybe a business transaction. Whatever it is, I believe that we carry the the we we house God's spirit, and He the spirit of God knows all things, and the spirit of God will instruct us. When to do things and, and and things not to you know things to steer to stay stay clear from, if that makes sense. And so with that on tonight, we're talking about how the the heroes or the sheroes. There's a solution inside of you. There's an answer inside of you. We carry the answer. And we have to be prepared and ready to always give the answer and give this, the solution for our peace, for our, 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 our safety, for whatever comes our way. And so my, uh, we were having this discussion in our truck with our children, little Reggie, our little wise six-year-old six was talking about superheroes. This was probably a few months ago. And he was asking about um, superheroes and their powers. And I said, well, we're all born with superheroes. We're all born with superpowers. And he was like, really? And so the other two kids was like, no, we're not. And I was like, no, we are. Because the Bible says, when you were in your mother's womb, I formed you in your mother's womb. We're all given a superpower. We're all given um, a, a, a distinct a set of skills that we are supposed to operate in in the earth. So we need to walk around saying that we are a shero, we are heroes, and we have to rise to the occasion when it's, it, it's, 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 we see it fit to do so. We have to rise to the occasion when we know that whatever the solution that's inside of us needs to come forth. And so on tonight, we're going to talk about how one person decided to stand up, use their superpower, and save the whole Israelites, and save the Lord's anger from being released upon the Israelites. It's so important that we tap into the solution that lies within us. It's so important that we tap into our superpowers. I stay in my lane and I try to kill it. We say that all the time. Stay in your lane and kill it. I'm a seer. So I stay in that lane. You know, I, I, I operate heavily in revelation. I stay in that lane. I don't try to deviate. I don't try to prophesy and preach and how everybody else do it. I stay in my lane. I operate in my superpower. And I want to encourage you on tonight to operate in your superpower. And I also want to encourage you and give you courage and fire on tonight and impart fire into you on tonight and be fearless to stand up when it's time to release it you know spider-man didn't release his web in just regular you know situations when he needed the web to come out he released it and it helped him when there was a 
a crime taking place is when he put his suit on and when he went to action. We have to be like Superman. We have to rise up and put, you know, e even like Superman. When something was going on, he went to that phone booth and he went from Clark Kent to Superman. You have to know when it's time to, to rise up and to bring out that superpower. It can be today. It can be tomorrow. You can, you can use it one time or you can use it 50. Whenever, whatever time it is for you to bring it out, you have to bring it out boldly, courageous, and fearlessly. You know, Spider-Man, when he was first learning how to tap into his power, he didn't, he didn't, knew, he didn't know and he didn't understand uh, the mm, full potential of yeah, what he yeah, carried, yeah. right? And um, yeah. you know, I'm a avid uh, Marvel, Marvel Comics, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Comcast type. You know, I, I love all of those things because there's a, on, I believe all things pro prophetic, right? Mm -hmm. There's an anointing uh, on those uh, those Marvel movies. But mm -hmm. one particular scene that you know, Spider Man, he was coming into the realization of what he carried. Mm -hmm. And one scene, he was he he accidentally shot his <laughs> web out, and he shot a little little little. It just came out a little bit, mm -hmm. right? And he said, like, "Hmm." And he tried it again. What would happen if God's people tap into the My supernatural God. power, you might the, miss super, every now <laughs> the supernatural anointing that Jesus. we carry? I believe that every hero, come on, mm. I believe that every she, every mm. hero mm -hmm. carries a. You are God ordained. You are born. You are equipped mm -hmm. with special powers, and the anointing comes from the Holy Spirit. Uh, somebody, listen, glory to God. I'm about to get fired up, but I want to tell you this, and I'm gonna pass it back. It's so important to know this one thing that. The reason why uh, Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, could tap into his superpower is because he operated in his lane, as my wife was saying. Mm -hmm. He would swing. He, he could climb. You know, he could, he could swing, you know, leap tall buildings in a single bound. He could mm -hmm. do all of those things, right? But I'm saying that to say, what would happen if God's people were to tap into their supernatural power? Mm -hmm. What would happen if God's people come into realization of what what is on the inside of them mm -hmm. listen i believe many times that we carry things and things like things are lying dormant on the inside of us but that's why it's so important to be around people who will who will literally cause your baby to leave come on mm -hmm. that you are around people that will literally stir the gifts that's on the inside of yes. you and so with that i believe that when you begin to stir up when you begin to listen when you begin to stir up the giftings the anointing and the equippings of god mm -hmm. listen the supernatural moves forward Mm -hmm. I believe that, listen, it was this same anointing that Samuel carried that gave him abnormal and unusual strength. Yeah. Come on. I believe that David, he carried an anointing that, that caused him to, that his hand, he slew a he slew a bear with his bare hands. He slew a lion with his, he had a, an anointing of supernatural strength. Listen, what am I saying to God's people on this evening? There is a supernatural anointing. There is a supernatural strength that will cause you to move beyond where you are. Come on. Listen, nothing that you do, nothing that you can say, no, not None of your limitations will ever cause you to move from the place until you really begin to tap into your power. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You have to know when it's the time. Like I said, um, Superman, he didn't, he, he made some mistakes along the way at the beginning. He shot his web out when it was unnecessary. And that's why, huh? Did I say, what did I say? Superman, sorry. Spider-Man, yes, Spider-Man. Y'all y'all follow me, track me. He shot his web out, you know, sometimes prematurely. And sometimes we have given prophetic words prematurely. Yes. We have we have prophesied prematurely. We have said things um, out of immaturity. And so you have to know that's why it's important to be around a tribe of people that can correct you, that can that can temper you, that can um, teach you, give you knowledge and wisdom and impart into you when those times are accurate, when those times are, you know, necessary. These are the times you shoot your web out. These are the times you don't. So you can go out there and effectively win souls for the kingdom and not immature maturely or ineffectively do it yes. we have to understand when it's our time to do it god doesn't work in time but we operate in time right and so we have to understand the timing of god to even do those things i can't go out in the middle of my world right now and say you know chaos is coming the storm is coming get right with the lord because i need to prepare the way of the lord there is a certain time and a certain way that the lord wants me to release it and if i don't do it in his timing then I can, you know, I, I can I can miss you and mess up a whole bunch of things. And we don't have time to mess up a whole bunch of things. 
Absolutely, you know, and and now there's one thing to you know when you're learning, when you're really when you're really beginning to learn. Now, uh, hear me, you you are there is a level of grace. Uh, that God releases upon his people when you're learning, when you're new right, to Right, absolutely. Right? That's and why you got to be in a safe environment to do that. Absolutely. And, and you know, just like, you know, I, I, I say this all the time, you know, here, here's a revelation. You know, a new car, a brand new car comes with a warranty. Mm -hmm. An old beat-up car or, or a beater is what a lot of people call it. It just depends on where you're from. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't get the same luxuries as as you would when you're a new when you're a brand new vehicle. Right. If something breaks on a brand new car, it's covered under the warranty. Mm -hmm. If something breaks and you're an old beater and you've been in the glory to God, hopefully you're about to catch this revelation. If if you uh, are an old car and you don't come with a warranty, listen, the the, the it's going to cost you more when you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. The new, the babes in Christ, you know, the Bible says we are to desire the sincere milk of the word. A baby has a little bit or a whole lot more grace than a seasoned vet in the game. So what am I saying to God's people? You know, it... What you said, you remember you said this a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. There's some falls that are deadly and there's some falls that are not. So when you are a vet in the game, those falls can be deadly. Absolutely. If you're a babe in Christ, you just roll on the floor. We can pick you back up. There's no bruises or scratches. You can keep it moving. Absolutely. And a baby and a baby can can recover a whole lot quicker than a, than an old season uh, 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 saint. So so it's important to know your superpower. It's important to know your limitations, and it's also important to know the timing of God. Is what my wife was saying. Mm -hmm. When you are new, there is a level of grace. There is a level of mistakes that you can make because you come with a warranty. God gives those babies grace, but the people that are responsible, the leaders, uh, and you know, that's another chapter, but the people that are responsible to lead God's people to whom much is given, much is required, you don't have the same grace as a baby does. Absolutely. And so with that, let's go to uh, Numbers chapter 25. We're going to be talking about Moab and, and Apostle Ray, you got a revelation about the Moabites that I just think is tremendous. A lot of people probably have missed that. But I'm going to walk you through the scriptures and I'm going to teach you on tonight how important it is to pull out that superpower. How important it is to bring the solution. Remember, somebody typed this in the comment section. Heroes and sheroes brings the solutions. Heroes and sheroes bring the answer. You have to understand that on tonight that you have the answer. You have to be encouraged on tonight that you have the solution. We don't have to go look for it. We don't have to go fight for it. We don't have to believe for it. We don't have to seek after it. It's inside of us. Glory we just to have to release it at the right time and in the right time and in the right seasons. My God. And sometimes that same superpower, just like Spider-Man, can be released over and over and over again. But you have to know when to do it. There's other um, superheroes that have more than one superpower. You have to understand when it's time to use that and when it's time tonight. But that's another teaching. So if you can go with me to Numbers chapter 25. This is when Mo, uh, Moab and the Moabites were seducing Israel. And do you want to talk about that revelation right now, or you want me to go ahead and get in? Yeah, you know, if you if you know, if you study, if you're a student of the word, you know, um, Moab, Moab, the origins of the Moabites, if you remember, when God was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, um, he told uh, Lot's wife not to look back and to, to depart that city. And, and the angels was basically waiting to to release the instructions or the consequences of heaven because that was a sin filled, sin filled city mm -hmm. and he was waiting for them to get out but we, we know that uh, his wife turned and she turned into she turned around mm -hmm. and turned into a pillar of salt mm -hmm. well uh Moab, the Moabite origins he had um, lot had two daughters mm -hmm. and uh, if you remember um, the first daughter says you know God had they was they, they had conspired and said well you know, God has destroyed this entire city. There is no man for us to lie with. Mm -hmm. And so um, they came up with this elaborate scheme and this plot to get their father drunk and to have sex with him. Mm -hmm. And it produced a son called Moab. Yeah. Ding, ding. Isn't it, isn't it amazing how and all of that ties into the sexual immorality. Yes, the seduction, the, the lust. The lust, the, the perversion, perversion, all of those things, right? And the, it lies in the heart of the Moabites. And that and that Moab was produced in that. Moab. And incest. Yes. It was an ancestral uh relationship. So as 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 women and, and you know, as women and men of God as sheroes, the rise of the shero and the rise of the hero. We have to search the origins mm -hmm. of a thing. Mm -hmm. And because you can always trace it 
back to the roots of where it came from. Mm -hmm. Good, that's good. I mean, that got me. Because everybody hear about the Moabites, but they don't realize that's Lot's son. The Moabites are the sons of Lot. And the sons of Lot was produced in incest. And so you can have, you only have perversion, lust, all these things in ancestral uh, type of relationship. So Numbers 25, it says, while Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women. Now remember this, I say this all the time, perversion is not gender specific. People think that, people think that if perversion is just for men and women, no, perversion is not gender specific. Just like with the mo there's men on men, women on women. It, it go is fluid. So sexual perversion. yeah, sexual perversion is fluid. It's not gender specific. I can't even say that right. It's, gen it's not gender specific, but you understand what I'm saying. So um, verse two says, "Who invited them to sacrifice to their gods? The people ate and bowed down before these gods." Little G. So Israel, knowing that they're they're the chosen people, right? Israel joined in worshiping. The Baal of Peor and the Lord's anger burned against them. Why was God angry with his people? Mm -hmm. Because he they were indulging in sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. Something they were supposed to stay away from. Something that even in the in the law of Moses, he had instructed them, you know, to stay away from foreign women. Yes. Because even the same thing happened with, with King Solomon. You know, he told him, you know, do not connect with foreign women because you know, you will begin to, they will turn you away from the God of yes, Israel. Yes, yes, And so you have to understand the things that you connect with has the potential to turn you away from the living God My and God. cause you to stumble and cause you to indulge in sexual immorality and cause you to indulge in sin. So this was, this was the stage that was set uh, in this time. God's anger had, was kindled against the people because they were, they were indulging in things that he had forbidden them to do. And then that they were warned against. And, you know, we talked about that earlier this evening. The warning comes, but the gospel has to come. Warning comes, but Jesus has to be given, right? And so they were given warnings after warnings about not indulging in these foreign women and foreign things and idol worship and all these things. But they didn't take heed to the warning. They Absolutely. did not take heed to the warning. And that's the thing. When the Lord gives you warning and hope, because they go hand in hand. When he gives warning and a solution, when he gives warning and an answer, when he gives warning and a way of escape, you have to take those things because if you continue to disregard the warnings, then things happen. Sin comes in. Death happens. Plagues come. You know, all sickness. kinds of sickness, diseases, all kinds of detestable things happen. And so the warning is these things are happening, but here's Jesus Christ, and he can give you a way out of, of escape. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things we got to pay attention to, I want to really just press upon, you know, pressing your spirit, is that it's important to know that sexual immorality was the cancer in that land. Yes. And we know that if we don't cut off cancer, it spreads. Mm -hmm. We know that there's a there's a type of cancer that spreads and it spreads quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, God, He is in the business. He is He is in the business of cutting off cancer mm -hmm. because He knew that mm -hmm. uh, the, the the sins was likened unto the cancer of this. The, you know, the, the sins of that time was likened unto cancer. Uh, you know, in His people, mm -hmm. and He didn't want His entire nation to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So, in, in in essence, God, He already had a plan. He already prepared to literally. Uh, uh, annihilate sin and abolish cancer mm -hmm. because he is the way, he's the truth, mm -hmm. and he's the light, right? If you ever want to come out of the place where you are, I believe that he is he is always the, he is always going to provide that place of hope for us. He is always going to provide. You have to be able to acknowledge the wrongdoing. You mm -hmm. have to be able there to diagnose mm -hmm. the cancer. Mm -hmm. And you know, once you diagnose the cancer, it has to get rid. You have to get rid of it, or it's going to literally kill you. Absolutely, and that's the thing. We don't want to sit in God's anger. We don't want to sit in disobedience and not move. We want the peace of God to reign in our lives. We want joy. We want understanding. We want. We will just want. We want the peace of God to reign over us. We don't want Him to sit in His wrath and His in in His anger because we didn't take heed to the warning. Absolutely right. Okay, so verse four says, "The Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of these people.'" 
kill them and expose them in broad daylight before the Lord so that the Lord's fierce anger may turn away from Israel. My God. Now see, this is the thing. I don't want you to go out thinking that you can just take all these, <laughs> all what's going on and just kill people. But what we can do is kill that spirit in the in the spirit. We can kill that evilness and that disease and sickness and all those things in the spirit. And we absolutely can expose them in the natural and in the spiritual. Verse 5 says, so Moses said to Israel judges, each of you must put to death those of your men who have joined in worshiping the Baal of Peor. Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Now I want to read that one more time. So uh, this is verse 6. Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel. They were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting because you know this is where the Holy Spirit dwelled in that time. When uh, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he left the assembly to took the spear in his hand and followed the Israelite into the tent. You want to get him? No. I'm going to read that again so you can hear what I'm saying. So, back to verse 6. It says, Then an Israelite man brought to his family a Midianite woman right before the eyes of Moses and the whole assembly of Israel while they were weeping at the entrance to the tent of meeting. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw this, he left the assembly, took a spear in his hand, and followed the Israelite into the tent. He drove the spear through both of them, through the Israelite, and into the woman's body. Then the plague against the Israelites were stopped. But those who died in the plague numbered 24,000. Now let me just stop right here. You have to understand, Phineas, he was the solutionist. He was the superhero in this story. He had the answer because of all of the Israelites were, were worshiping the idols that God had warned them against not to do. And in order for the anger of God to stop, he had to stop the, the, the source of that cancer, my God. And the source of that issue was the Israel, I mean, the source of that issue was the Israelite man who brought the Moabite woman. The Lord said, do not connect with the Moabite women because disastrous things will happen and the anger of the Lord was festering in order for that to stop they literally had to kill what was spreading the cancer and it said and like look at this in, 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 in modern day time we're dealing with the coronavirus we're dealing with a plague now do we need to go find who was the source of it and kill it with a spear literally no but we definitely need to find the source of it in the spiritual and kill it there that is the warning of the Lord. The Lord, the, the hope is in Jesus Christ. The warning is we have to find the source of what is, is festering the Lord's anger. It, it, I just wept on yesterday. It was just a weeping come over me on yesterday because I just don't understand how so many people who call themselves believers are so in compromising positions and not even in fear of the Lord's anger and reverence of, of judgment to come up on his people and we are not exempt from the Lord's anger just like the Israelites were not exempt from the Lord's anger but one superhero my God one hero had the solution inside of him one person had the answer if we get rid of this cancer if we get rid of this disease then the anger of the Lord will stop and peace will come up on the land in verse 10, it said, The Lord said to Moses, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites, for he was zealous as I am for my honor among them, 
so that in my zeal I did not put an end to them. My God, can you understand if that hero, if that hero rise up inside of you, what you can prevent what happening to the people and what you can encounter with the Holy Spirit. If we walk around with the solutions, if we walk around with the answer and we release them in the timely manner, when the Lord tells us to do so, what can happen in the earth? If all of the solution is my God, get together. If all of the sheroes and heroes get on their knees tonight and ask the Lord for the solution on how we can tackle this cancer and this plague that's happening in the earth, what can we release in the heavenlies? What can be manifested in the earth? It is tremendous to know that we carry a solution in within us and that we can stop let me read it again to you. Verse 11 says, Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest has turned my anger away from the Israelites. Just because in a few scriptures before, the, the anger was towards the Israelites. And so the Lord said the minute that he killed that cancer, the minute that he drove that spirit through that cancer, the, the anger for the Israelites turned away. And it says, for he was a, he was, talking about Phinehas, he was a zealous, my God. And we have to be mature and zealous, oh God, my God. And, and bringing the solution and bringing the answer. As I am for my honor among them, so that in my zeal, I did not put an end to them. Because the Lord could have taken everybody out. He could have killed all the Israelites. He could have taken everybody out because he, he could have satisfied his own anger. But that superhero was sitting in the midst knowing that he had a heart after God. Amen. Knowing that he can get God's anger to turn away and that peace can be on the land. You have to Glory understand to God. Who's going who's gonna to stand in the midst of adversity? Mm -hmm. Who is going to stand when God's people are in the midst of a plague? Glory to God. Mm -hmm. I declare and I decree that God, he is getting ready to raise up some Phineas. Mm. I believe that God is going to raise up a bold warrior. Come on. He's going to raise up a Shiro. Come on, rise, Shiro. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to raise up some heroes that's going to say, I will not stand My against God. infidelity. Mm -hmm. I will not stand against immorality any longer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be that one. Glory to God. I'm going to be that Phineas that's going to say, listen, this thing is going to be taken out this day. Glory My to God. God. I'm not going to sit back and listen. And listen. I'm not going to sit back and watch my people die. I'm not going to sit back and and watch this this cancer spread throughout, not on my watch, oh my spread on in this nation and spread in this region, not on my watch. I dare God's people to say, listen, mm -hmm. I'm going to walk in the things that God has called me to walk in. Come on, even in the midst of adversity. I remember uh, uh, my God of Zion. I remember a hero named David. Come on, uh, listen, his people, his brethren tried to discourage him. His brethren said, go back and go to, go back and tend to the sheep. Go back and do the thing that what you were doing before. Go back and do the familiar thing. But I'm here to tell you that God, he is calling you to the unfamiliar place. I'm here to tell you, listen, that you will rise. Come on, you will rise and you will be glory be unto God. There is, a, there is a superpower. Yeah. Hallelujah. There is an anointing on the inside of you waiting to be unlocked, waiting to be released in the earth. Mm -hmm. It definitely is. And then in verse 12, the Hallelujah. Lord says, Therefore tell him I am making my covenant of peace with him. I don't want you to miss over that. I don't want you to just glean over that. He's making a covenant of peace. Can you imagine when we yes. take out the disease? Can you imagine when we take out the cancer? Can you imagine when we come forth with the solution and the answer? The covenant that we make with God. Hallelujah. The covenant that we make with the people. One heroic act can shift the entire trajectory of a nation. Come on. One heroic yes. act can shift. My God, and kindle the anger of God. Listen, you have been anointed. You have been equipped. You have, listen, you carry the power of God. And there is a shero on the inside of you. Come on, daughters. There is a hero on the inside of you. Come on, sons. Listen, one act can shift God's anger. Listen. You're going to stand in <laughs> peace. Come on. And listen, not only will it shift God's anger, he's getting ready to release a portion of peace 
peace upon you. You've been fighting for too long. Hallelujah. You've been fighting bloodline. My God curses. You've been fighting generational curses. And you're going to say, listen, I'm going to kill this thing today. I'm going to cut this cancer out today so that my people can walk in peace. So that my people can live in peace. Come on. So that my people will speak in peace will be our portion. My goodness. And in verse 13, it says, he and, his, he and his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his God and made atonement for the Israelites. Glory My God, God, she rose. Where are you? Heroes, where are you? Because we need you to rise up today. We need you to make an everlasting covenant as, uh, for, for the priesthood. And because, and for, let, let me read it again because I'm just so excited because it takes one act of hero, heroism. It takes one act of heroism. It takes one time for you to rise up. It says he and his descendants, the descendants, the inheritance, his children, his Lord children's children, his children's children's children. He and his descendants will have a covenant of a lasting priesthood because he was zealous for the honor of his God. And made atonement for the Israelites. My God, who are you making atonement for today? Who are you being zealous about today? Hallelujah. Who are you making a covenant today for? Don't just sit back because there are people depending on your superpowers. There are people depending on your superpowers. My God, come on. Don't put the cape on ice. Put it on. Go out. Declare the works of the Lord. Be zealous. Be mature. Release that power because you are saving generations. You're Lord making atonement for generations to come, my God. And I sense very strongly in the realm of the spirit that many of you have seen injustices. Many of you have seen, hallelujah, immoral acts. And you were hesitant. And you listen. Phineas, he did not hesitate mm -hmm. to destroy the cancer that will, would have eventually destroyed a nation. Come on. I, I, you have to be able to say, listen, I'm going to stand even when it's uncommon. Glory to God. I'm going to stand even when it's unpopular. Come on. Uh, I'm going to stand. Listen, when everybody else is doing wrong, I'm going to be that hero. I'm going to be that glory to God, that hero that's going to preserve my generation and that's going to preserve my legacy. I don't, I'm not worried about, hallelujah, who is against me. Mm -hmm. But if God be for me. My who God. can be against me? Listen, you have to go in the name of the Lord. You have to rise up with your superpower in yes. the name of the Lord. Yes. Listen, you're not coming with sword and shield, but you're coming in the name of the Lord. And I want to let you know, come on, hero. I want to let you know that there is an anointing that you've not tapped into yet. Come on. There is an anointing that you've not even, hallelujah, you have not begun mm -hmm. to operate in the fullness of what God has called you to be. But you got to be ready in season and out of season because just like for he did not know when it was time for him to release his superpower, but he did it in the time that it was needed the most. So it might be today, it might be 10 years from now, but I declare and decree today that you are working, that it is being manifested, that it's being cultivated even as you sit and that you're ready to release it. The time that you release it is going to work, it's going to be effective, it's going to bring atonement to the Israelites, it's going to be a bring atonement to the descendants of your children. My God, you you have to understand the level of responsibility. I just got a, a little sign from my kids' bedroom today, and it has Spider-Man on it. It says, with, with superpowers come much responsibility. With superpowers, it comes much responsibility. Remember, sheroes and heroes bring the solutions. They bring the answers. It also comes with great responsibility. Phineas did not probably even imagine what it was going to bring for the Israelites. But because he loved God so much, because he was zealous for God's anger not to continue against the people, he did what was necessary in the time. Yes. And I declare today that you're going to do what's Glory necessary in the time so you can bring an atonement for the people of God. My Hallelujah. Phineas. Hallelujah. The anointing, the superpower, mm. the equipping that the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, had on the inside of him. It was released at the proper time. Oh Come on. You can be full of wisdom. You can be full of might. You can be full of the anointing. But the time, hallelujah, listen. Fret not, sons. Come on. Fret not, daughters. Hot glory be unto God. But I believe that God is saying unto you, and he's communicating this message to you, that he's releasing you for such a time as this. Yes. Come on. Listen, with all of the plagues that's going on, with all of the murder 
disappointed with all of the foolishness that's going on in the earth. I want to let you know, glory to God, that your hearts cry. Listen, I say to God all the time, Lord, will you spare this city for the sake of one righteous? Come on. I'm here to tell you, listen, You get God loves you just that much. You carry that much power. You carry that much anointing. Mm, my God. And you got to use Hallelujah. it. You can't just sit on it. That's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to be mute and immobile. My God. He wants you to be mute and immobile. But we have to mobilize. We have to be militant. We have to go. Listen, I remember years ago, there were some things going on in this child development center that I used to work in. And everything everything that would happen that was contrary to the vision or the mission of, this, of the child development center, I would speak up. And the director said, you're just a modern day vigilante. Everything that goes awry or adversarially in this building, you come and speak on it because right. that's my superpower. I'm going to stand for justice and I'm going to come up against injustice. And I impart that upon you today that you are going to rise up, that you are going to bring the solutions, that you're going to be a vigilante in the earth and yes. that you're all right. shut yes. out. You're going to come against everything that's adversary to your God, to your kingdom, to your standard, to the Bible. And you are going to declare the works of the Lord. No longer, my God. Will you be timid? No longer will you be mute and in the back. Today is the day for you to rise up. Today is the day for you to be the shero to bring the answers to the earth. My Hallelujah. Goodness. Listen, Phineas. Hallelujah. He carried the voice. Phineas, he carried the voice to come against Jesus. sexual immorality. Hallelujah. Listen, the thing that he was born to do, mm -hmm. the thing that God had already printed in his DNA, mm -hmm. hallelujah, he just had to activate it at the appropriate time. My and it is my prayer, hallelujah. I stand in the I stand in agreement with God's mm -hmm. people that Lord, listen, that they will release the word mm -hmm. in a timely manner. Hallelujah, that it would be the most effective. Listen, God, he wants to get the glory out of your life. God God, he wants to get the honor out of your life. God, he wants to get the praise out of your life. Why? Because he's anointed you to speak. Come on. He's anointed you to declare. He's an anointed you, my God of Zion. He has anointed you to stand against sexual immorality. Hallelujah. Immorality and impurity and everything that goes against the standards of God. I believe that God is saying to his people, come on, she rose. Come on, heroes. What he's saying to your hallelujah. He's saying, activate your voice in the hallelujah at the appropriate time. Listen, and God will redeem his people mm -hmm. because you were bold enough. Come on. Because you were courageous enough. Because you were fearless enough to stand against the thing mm -hmm. that was going to be the eventual death of your bloodline. My God. My God, can you Hallelujah. imagine staying mute and your bloodline dying off? Can you imagine having the superpower but not releasing it? Can you imagine the detriment to a nation of people, to generations of people, if you decide not to rise up and speak? You know, Superman, he carried his x-ray vision. One of his powers was x-ray vision. Hallelujah. I want to talk to the prophets. Glory to God. What will happen when God's prophets begin to see in the realm of the spirit? Listen, x-rays expose things that, that's not, uh, hallelujah, visible to the naked eye. Come on, I want to tell you prophets, hallelujah, seers, when you begin to come together, when you begin to come on one accord, listen, you can see things well or far off. You can see the danger of far off, and you can combat it in the realm of the spirit. But even if you miss it, glory be unto God, you got to be, hallelujah, bold and courageous to say, listen, I acknowledge this thing is against the standards of God. And if God be for me, who's going to be against me? Listen, I carry the anointing to speak. I carry the anointing to declare. I carry the anointing to say, hallelujah, what does say the Lord? My God, you got to do it. Hallelujah. You got to do it. Today is your Lord activation. Glory be unto God. Today, I'm trying to think of what superhero had to be activated before he got sent out. Even Hulk, he had to get angry. He got to be activated before he can release that, that power. Before he, he went and knocked out everybody. You got to be activated on today. This is your activation on today to rise up. What situation needs to be handled by you? Ooh, ooh. What situation needs to have atonement and you're the solutionist? What situation? Oh, I feel a praying. Let's, let's pray for the people of tonight. If you never opened up your mouth and responded. Hallelujah. If you never opened up your mouth to respond. Mm -hmm. If you never opened up your mouth and respond. 
How, how will God's people be redeemed? There was one, hallelujah, there was a voice crying out in the wilderness. And he said, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. Will you be that voice? Will you be that superhero? Will you be that shero that says, Lord, give me the words to speak and I will release the words. Hallelujah. It's time out, men and women of God, for you to stop being silent. God did not give you the voice to be mute. God did not give you the voice to turn a deaf ear. Hallelujah. But I believe that God is saying that you are the solution. What you carry, God has already equipped you to be the solutionist in the earth. Come on. God has already equipped you, sons and daughters. My God, because he's equipped you with the power and with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How do you know? Because the word of God declares, and ye shall receive power after the glory be unto God. Listen, and ye shall receive power, and ye shall receive power, and ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Your supernatural power, your supernatural anointing. Hallelujah. God wants to use you greatly. Listen, I want to pray. Listen, I, I feel stirred to pray for God's people. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now. Father, we glorify you now. Thank you that your sons and daughters are coming into a full awareness of what they carry, Father God. In the name of Jesus, that they will be like Phineas. Hallelujah, God. Phineas, they will be like the man of God. And they will stand in the midst. Glory to God of people, God, that are operating contrary to what you've called them to operate in. God, that they will stand in the midst of sexual immorality. God, that they will stand in the midst. Notice that it was a covenant between the Israelite and the Moabite woman. And hallelujah, Phineas had to literally kill that thing. Phineas had to literally take that thing out. Come on. I believe that God, hallelujah, when you begin to identify the thing that is the cancer-causing agent, that God is saying, son, it's time to take it out. It's not Listen, we don't negotiate with terrorists. We listen, we take them out. And I'm here to tell you listen, everything that God has equipped you to do, everything that God has called you to do, everything that God has anointed you to do, hallelujah, you will walk in your supernatural power. Father, and I lift up every person that is watching. Under the sound of my voice, Father God. Hallelujah. God, I thank you that even now that you will cause them to walk in the realm of the supernatural. God, that they will walk, hallelujah, in unreal, hallelujah, unnatural and un unusual strength, Father. And God, that even now, hallelujah, that as they begin to move and exercise the anointing, God, that you've given them, Lord, that they will cut the heads off of giants. God, that they will, my God, you will expand their territory, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, and you will preserve a nation. Hallelujah. May you be the one to stand in the hallelujah. May you want, may you be the one to stand against the thing that is trying to destroy God's people. And may it be well with you. And may the favor of God be with you. And may the peace of God be with you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I thank you. We declare and we decree that it is already done. We declare and we decree that it is so. And it shall not be otherwise. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. And Father, we give you praise. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to know, listen, glory to God. You don't have to love no longer. Do you have to worry about the consequences for speaking up? When God is urging you to say something, when God is urging you to stand against the injustice, when God is ur urging you and calling you to hallelujah into action to kill the thing that is seeking to kill and to eradicate God's people. But the devil, he is a liar and the devil, he is a loser. May the Joshua's arise. Hallelujah. And they're going to annihilate and walk in the land and possess the things that God has said that we will possess. Go in the land and occupy it. Go in the land and possess it. 
Hallelujah. For God, it is God's will that you desire the bliss. Hallelujah. That you that you have the best of the best. That you do, hallelujah. It is God's desire that you do, hallelujah, that you have the best land. It is God's desire that you have the best vineyards. Come on. It is the best. Hallelujah. It is God's will that you will walk in his best. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we will give you your due glory, your due honor, and your due praise. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Listen, I pray that this word has been a blessing to God's people. And listen, I want you all to do, do us a favor. I want you to go to the page, Facebook page, and like our page. Follow us on Contagious Church Charlotte. I am Reggie Wingfield, one of your lead servants. My wife and I, Prophetess Shanika, we are the co uh, we are the servants, are the lead servants of Contagious Church Charlotte, where our love, where our faith, and where our worship will remain. Hallelujah, contagious. Listen, I'm trying to come down. I'm so stirred up. And I just want to let you know before I get off of here, there is greatness on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Will you tap into the greatness that God has promised? Because the word of God declares greater is he that is in you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Than he that is in the world. That means that you have victory over depression. Come on. That you have victory. Hallelujah. Over all manner of sickness and over all manner of disease. Listen, your mind will be free. Come on. Everything that is glory whom for whom the son has set free is truly free indeed go and follow us on that facebook page glory to god contagious church charlotte go and follow us go check us out on the web we want to know more about who you are listen listen i know you probably want to know about more about who we are we are contagious www.contagious.church Go check us out on the web. Listen, I believe that your best is yet to come. I believe that, listen, the reason why all of these plagues is coming, the reason why all of these storms are coming, the reason why all of this disaster is coming, because he's raising up some phineasis that's going to stand, hallelujah, in the midst of what, what is righteous, that people are going to stand, hallelujah, for what God is saying is righteous and forbid all evil. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. That your people will testify and your people will learn to use the voice and activate the gifts that's on the inside of them. All for your glory. Listen, it was my pleasure being here. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And even those that will watch the replay, I pray that God will use you tremendously. And I pray that you, hallelujah, that he operates or calls you to operate in the fullness of what your giftings and what your calling is. Listen, every person that God has created has a measure of faith. I firmly believe with my whole heart that there is greatness that, hallelujah, that's on the inside of you. And you listen, when God releases you amongst great people, uh, listen, those gifts that have been, that have been lying dormant will begin to rise. I believe that the gifts that have been lying dormant, that they will be stirred up like they've not been stirred before and God will get the glory, the honor and the praise. Until next time, I dare you to go out and be contagious. I love you all. I see you on Sunday. Bye-bye.